Meir Harzion, Wikipedia article audio. Meir Harzion was an Israeli military commando. Youth Unit 101 890th Paratroop Battalion The Harzion Affair End of Career 1967 and 1973 Wars Writing Career Late Life and Death Articles as a key member of Unit 101, he was highly praised by Chief of Staff Moshe Dayan who described him as the finest of our commando soldiers, the best soldier ever to emerge in the IDF. Ariel Sharon described him as the elite of the elite. His three-year military career was ended by injuries sustained in battle. Harzion was born in Hurtlia in 1934 and was a third-generation Sabra. His mother, Sarah Goldenberg, had been born in Rishon el Zion to a mother who had been born in Jerusalem to a Sephardi Jewish family originally from Izmir and a father who had been born in Romania and moved to Palestine with his parents as a child. Harzion's father, Eliyahu Horowitz, had moved to Palestine from Russia. When Harzion was three years old, the family moved to Rishpon, where his two sisters Shoshana and Rachel were born. When he was 14, his parents divorced, and Harzion moved to Kibbutz Ein Herod with his father while his mother and sisters moved to Kibbutz Beit Alpha. As a child, Harzion spent much of his free time watching nature and taking walks, sometimes crossing the borders of Palestine. In 1949, he was briefly detained by Syrian authorities together with his 13-year-old sister, Shoshana, after being caught in Syrian territory east of Beit Sheen. In 1951, two years later, they were both captured by a shepherd while on the Syrian side of the border. This time they were held prisoner in Damascus, and the two children were only released by the Syrian government after a month of negotiation by the UN and the governments of both countries, making international headlines. Being the children of divorced parents, Meir and his younger sister Shoshana had developed a deep emotional bond with each other, and had become extremely close often illegally crossing into neighboring Arab countries together. During the 1950s around a dozen Israeli teenagers were killed attempting to illegally reach the ancient city of Petra, which is located 40 kilometers inside Jordan. Such cross-border treks were considered a rite of passage for elite youth. The song Ha Selah Ha Adam, which praised a group killed attempting the trek, was banned. At the age of 18, Meir and his girlfriend managed to reach Petra at night, after three days of hiking, and crossing the Wadi Musa and climbing Mount Hor and bypassing an unpassable waterfall, they apparently slipped into the ancient city unnoticed, under the cover of darkness, before exploring the Nabataean palaces. This feat made them legendary figures amongst the Israeli youth of the time for whom Petra had represented an impenetrable citadel. We had only a compass and a map on a small scale, but that was definitely enough to find our way to Petra, Harzion recalled. In 1953 he was one of the founding members of Unit 101. He took part in the unit's first operation at the end of August 1953. Sixteen men with two jeeps. Two command cars and a reconnaissance aircraft attacked the Azazma Bedouin camps around the wells at al Aja. Their tents were burnt and anything attempting to reach the water was shot at. On the night of 14-15 October 1953 around 65 men from Unit 101 joined a larger IDF force in an attack on the village of Kibiyah, in what became known as the Kibiyah Massacre. 
Harzion commanded one of three squads sent to ambush any reinforcements coming from Enilin, Budras, and Shugba. In another nighttime attack, 1819 December 1953, two Unit 101 squads led by Harzion ambushed a car on the Bethlehem to Hebron Road. A Lebanese born doctor serving in the Arab Legion, Mansar Awad, was killed. The Israeli Prime Minister Moshe Sherat was annoyed that he had not been informed about the attack beforehand. Three nights later Harzion led a four-man squad on a 21-kilometer march to the outskirts of Hebron. Other missions that Harzion took part in included Operation Black Arrow and Operation El Qayyim. The following year, May 26, 1954, Harzion was amongst a 10-man squad from the newly formed 890th Paratroop Battalion, led by its commander Ariel Sharon, which carried out a raid near Kerbet Jinba, southwest of Hebron. Two National Guardsmen were killed in an ambush as well as two farmers and two camels. Sherrod once again complained about not being informed and suspected that Minister of Defense Pinhas Slavon had not been consulted either. On 27-28 June 1954 Harzion was in a seven-man squad led by Major Aharon Davidi that launched a surprise attack on an Arab Legion camp at Aitsan, 13 kilometers east of Kalkalya. Three legionnaires were killed as well as a farmer. Rafia Abdelaziz Omar, who was stabbed to death by Harzion to prevent him raising the alarm. On their return to Israeli lines one of the team who had been wounded, Sergeant Yitzhak Jibli, was left behind. On discovering that Sergeant Jibli had been taken prisoner Chief of Staff Moshe Dayan approved a series of hostage-taking raids. On July 31, August 1, 1954 Harzion led a group of ten raiders who attacked two policemen near Jinan, taking one of them prisoner. On their way back they killed a farmer watching his fields. On the 30-31 August 1954 Harzion took part in Operation Bini Amin II. This operation was approved by Prime Minister Moshe Sherat and was commanded by Ariel Sharon. The attackers were divided into four groups. The first attacked a school building in the village of Beit Lakia. The other three set ambushes for the expected arrival of reinforcements. Only Harzion's group were successful. They had strung a wire across the road with cans of petrol at each end. A car full of soldiers from the Arab Legion drove into the trap. Two were killed, one wounded, and three taken prisoner. Sergeant Yitzhak Jibli was released on October 29, 1954, four months after being wounded and captured. In the middle of February 1955 Harzion's sister, Shoshana, along with her boyfriend Oded Wegmeister from Degania Bet, both 18, were captured, abused and murdered by Bedouin tribesmen from Wadi Algar while on an illegal cross-border hike across the Judean desert on Jordanian territory. When he heard of her death, Harzion was inconsolable and vowed revenge. On March 4, he and three ex-members of the 890th Battalion drove to the Armistice Line with Jordan. In Wadi Algar, nine kilometers from the border, they captured six Bedouin from the Hahalayan and Azazma tribes. The prisoners were interrogated and five of them killed, four with knives and the fifth was shot. One of the dead was 16 years old. The sixth was sent back to his tribe to tell what happened. The men probably had nothing to do with the killing of Harzion's sister, and had merely belonged to the same tribes as the murderers. David Ben-Gurion told the cabinet that the Israelis did not know enough Arabic to understand what their prisoners were saying. Sharon wrote that it was the kind of ritual revenge the Bedouins understood perfectly. 
but the repercussions of what Harzion had done were very 20th century. The Jordanians made a formal complaint to the UN. On their return, Harzion and three of his companions were held in custody for 20 days. They were released without charge, as a result of protection and stonewalling by them and their colleagues in the army, and soon rejoined their old unit. Sherat, who suspected that Dayan had advanced knowledge of the raid, and who deplored such actions, noted critically in his diary, the dark soul of the Bible has come alive among the sons of Nahalal and Ein Herod. Operation Jonathan 11-12 September 1956, was an attack by two paratroop companies on Kerbet al rawa Police Fort, on the Hebron Beer Sheba Road, in which over 20 Jordanian soldiers and policemen were killed. During the fighting Harzion was wounded in the throat and arm. His life was saved by an army doctor who performed a tracheotomy using his pocket knife while still under fire. The injuries left Harzion unable to continue his army career. He was awarded the Medal of Courage. He had attained the rank of captain. During the 1967 Six-Day War, Harzion was called up as captain in the reserves, and despite the use of only one hand, took part alongside the paratroopers in the battle for the old city of Jerusalem. In one important exploit in the battle, he killed a Jordanian sniper who had been holding up the Israeli advance, after stalking the sniper across a rooftop, he killed him with hand grenades. Harzion served again as a captain during the Yom Kippur War, on the Golan Front, in which he fought deep inside Syrian territory and rescued injured soldiers behind enemy lines. In 1969 he published his diaries which gave an account of his time as a paratrooper. Of one of the early attacks he wrote, Once again I am beset by this strong feeling of discord, the feel of battle, the will to victory, the hatred towards one who wishes to take from you what is most precious of all your life. These first victories have been too easy. He also gives an account of the killing of farmer Rafia Abdelaziz Omar during the 27-28 June 1954 operation. A telephone line blocks our way. We cut it and continue. A narrow path leads along the slope of a hill. The column marches forward in silence. Stop. A few rocks roll down the hill. I catch sight of a man surveying the silence. I cocked my rifle. Ghibli crawls over to me, Har, for God's sake, a knife. His clenched teeth glitter in the dark and his whole body is tight, his mind alert, for God's sake. I put my Tommy down and unsheath my machete. We crawl towards the lone figure as he begins to sing a trilled Arab tune. Soon the singing will turn into a death moan. I am shaking, every muscle in my body is tense. This is my first experience with this type of weapon. Will I be able to do it? We draw closer. There he stands, only a few meters in front of us. We leap. Ghibli grabs him and I plunge the knife deep into his back. The blood pours over his striped cotton shirt. With not a second to lose, I react instinctively and stab him again. The body groans, struggles, and then becomes quiet and still. During the latter part of his life he lived in Ahuzat Shoshana, a farm built on a hilltop above the Jordan Valley, just north and in sight of Kibbutz Beit Alpha right next to the ruins of the Crusader Castle of Belvoir. The farm is named after his sister and her name is written on the gate to the farm. He became a right-wing writer and patron to movements such as Homsh First. In 2005, 
he published criticisms of his former colleague Ariel Sharon for his policy of disengagement from Gaza. Harzion died on March 14, 2014 from natural causes at the age of 80. Harzion was buried in Kochov Hay Arden Park. His funeral was attended by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, President Shimon Peres, Defence Minister Moshe Allen, and other ministers and dignitaries. Obituary, celebrated IDF soldier Meir Marzion dies at 80, tabletmag.com, March 14, 2014.